Hey guys, I just had the realization that I don't know how to design outdoor scenery. I mean, like, okay, if you've been watching these vlogs, I have done studies. I, I've, I've done many studies. I also have a sketchbook that's full of studies that I have not shown on here. Um, but today Bones was like, hey, you should go and hecking design the background for the first scene of Nine Point. And I was like, okay. And then I sat down and I was like, oh no, I don't know what I'm doing. Because <laughs> when I'm drawing things inside, so like an indoor scene, it is very easy to like draw things because they're all kind of rectangles and you're in a confined space, so everything is very just confined and simple. Whereas drawing something that's very organic, like a forest especially, where it's like the trees are all over the place and they're crisscrossing and stuff, it's like, oh man, how do I keep this consistent? How do I make sure that I like, like I'm really worried about objects and trees and everything like shifting around as I draw panels. But yeah, but how do you how do you draw things so that they're consistent when it's like just like a mess of trees? Sometimes I wish I could just build like a 3D model and then just use that. Wouldn't that make my life easier? It wouldn't cuz building a 3D model would take forever, but like huh, if only. If only. Um so I guess my best strategy is just to kind of create landmarks. Like I threw in a bunch of trees and stuff that are like okay, this tree will go here and this tree will go here and I'm hoping that'll be enough for me to like draw the scene without it being confusing and shifting all around and stuff. Cuz yeah, when you're just drawing like a couch and a couple bookshelves in a room, it's a lot easier to keep them consistent and like basically in the right place. But yeah, man, forests. They're crazy guys. So that's where I'm at. It's also weird because an outdoor scene is very, like, sprawling. If you're drawing, like, inside of a room, there's walls. There, There's a set amount of space. Everything outside of these walls, you don't really need to know too much about. But with, you know, a forest scene, it's like, what does the far distance look like? If they're looking through the trees, what do they see? Then I, I'm like, whoa, I can't just fit everything into a tiny little grid. It kind of is all over the place. So that's what I'm really struggling with, and I'm kind of terrified. And working on this has been very, like, it's it's made my heart go doki-doki in, like, a spooky way. Yeah, just all the reasons I listed. It's, it's, it's new. It's challenging. I don't know what I'm doing, but heck, I'm gonna try my best. And the more I do it, the better I'll get, so I just gotta do it. Just gotta get it done and try my best and figure it out. Because I'm sure I will have to draw many, many forest scenes all through Nine Point. Because there's lots of travel and forests. Because lots of the animals in Nine Point live in forests. So I'll figure it out. I'll figure out how to make forests look unique. That's another challenge I'm facing where it's like, how do I make this set piece interesting and unique compared to this set piece? And this one... Because again, it's easy when it's a certain room and it's like, I can decorate this room and make it super, you know, push the style this way and dress it all in these colors. Whereas like, it's a forest. It's like, it's all generally always green and brown and gray and stuff. I mean, like mood and lighting and time of day will affect it a ton. But man, it's hard. It's different. It's new. I don't get it all yet. So... Since I sat down and started on this and I was like, I don't really know what I'm doing. So I started with kind of a, an above view. Because at least in the scene that I'm drawing, like, they don't move too far from, like, this one spot. It all kind of happens in this little path area. And I have a vague idea of, like, what each side of the path leads to. So I was like, okay, I will take a very confined area um, and just design that. So I did a little top-down view. Um, just to figure out, okay, here's where the main character will stand. Here's, like, two important set pieces. And then I tried to... I started with, like, the important landmarks and drew those. And then tried to draw everything in kind of a 3D fashion. Um, filling in all the background stuff. Trying out colors. It's very, like, sketchy and gestural at this point. Because I'm like, let's get the general mood and the general idea down, and then I can start going into specifics and figure out how the characters can interact with the different setting pieces and go from there. And I hope that works out for me and it doesn't look bad and weird. A color I'm definitely struggling with. I think there's a few different colors I can try. 
uh, I mean, directions for colors. I think one thing I should have done, looking back at this footage now, is that I should probably sit down and grab, like, two or three color palettes that suit the mood and the general color of, like, the forest, and then try them out instead of just doing one and going, eh, that's good enough, I should probably try a few variations to see if maybe I can do a better job the second time. So maybe that's what I'll do next time, maybe next video, maybe before that if I have time to work on Nine Point during the week. Though honestly, I don't really. I kind of only work on Nine Point during our Saturday streams and then for these vlogs, because um, I've been working on Magpie during the week. Also, I don't have a lot of time to draw during the, the weekdays because I work full time and it's hard and I'm tired. <laughs> also, Bones and I have decided to clean the whole house. I say Bones and I, it's mostly Bones. <laughs> That's what he does while I'm at work. I come home and everything is sparkly and clean and it's amazing and I love it. And I love him for cleaning our house. He's a beautiful boy. I give him high fives. But yeah, so maybe I'll work on this more before the next vlog. Maybe not. I don't know, man. I don't make promises that I can't keep. I do it all the time, so I should stop doing that. So yeah, I also tried to, once I had a general idea of how things were going to look, I decided to just try putting, you know, the characters in the scene and see if I can get, like, the atmosphere and the color and maybe the blocking down a little bit instead of having the actual comic pages be the first trial run of how everything looks. So it's like, it's like a fake comic panel type deal. So I was like, okay, here's a big landmark, here's Marble, the main character, um, here's how the background will look, and I tried out the colors that I'd chosen, adding a little more mood, because the scene starts out a little ominous. So I was like, I'll go for a nice little ominous tone. It also takes place in, like, October, so the leaves are beginning to change colors. So yeah, I was like, I can't make it all just green and gray, I gotta add in some nice yellows and oranges as well. I was trying to contrast, like, the yellows and oranges with some purple in the background. I'm okay with it. I don't know. I don't know. I gotta try other things before I, I decide. So yeah, another thing I'm concerned about, I guess I just gotta practice, but I'm very concerned about my backgrounds getting too, like, sketchy and gestural, because, like, when these final pages came out, they're gonna be, like, painterly, because Nine Point is a little bit of a painterly style, not super hard or anything like that, but I'm not used to it, and I'm not used to painting forests, so... I wonder how it'll be. I hope it's not messy and icky looking and hard to understand. One thing I really need to work on is lighting. How the heck does lighting work? I don't know. I gotta figure it out. Yeah, so doing lots of new stuff is scary, but I just gotta do it because I'm not gonna figure it out until I give it a try. And it's okay if I fail. It's okay if it looks bad the first time, Ursula. Calm down. Give yourself a break. Eat a Kit Kat. That is where I'm at with Nine Point. Um, also, during our stream, we did a bunch of color corrections to a bunch of characters. Still working on those. And, yeah, it's coming along. It's getting there. What else have I been up to besides this? Um, working away at Magpie. Again, during the week, I did not have much time to work. Just because Bones and I had a lot of errands to run. Um, we are doing a sale in our store right now. So, we... We had to drop off packages um, and take the dogs for a walk, even though it was freezing earlier this week. And we took the dogs for a little jaunt to the post office. And they all both hurt their paws because I guess, like, the trail we were on was covered in salt. Holding the leash was hurting because, like, my I didn't wear thick enough gloves and my fingers were freezing off. So, yeah, it was a bad time, but it was fun in the end. We also went shopping and bought like a whole bunch of cleaning supplies, which was very fun. Because when you're an adult, that is like where you get your kicks, <laughs> is just buying household items, um, such as towels. Towels are great. I love buying towels. It's fun. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that, that's been my week, is running errands, cleaning the house, touching in with Magpie a little bit. I'm definitely not going to hit the 50 pages before... January. Who knows? Maybe when I'm on vacation for Christmas, maybe I'll get lots of pages done, but I don't know. Because the first day when I was like, hell yeah, I'm gonna do all these magpie pages, I zoomed through like 20 thumbnails and a whole bunch of inks and it was great, but like since I'm lucky if I get like a page done a week, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how good it'll go, how, how much I'll hit this goal, but basically it's just nice to have a 
a gold because it's uh, it is making me touch in with magpie and work on it which i wasn't doing before i mean i was busy with other stuff but it is nice to be like all right i should work on magpie see if i can make this goal so yeah chill deadlines they're nice go easy on yourself i've semi given up on nanorimal um i've written like thirty thousand words ish possibly more at this point because this is being recorded in advance the bones and i are going to like an overnight nanorimal event so who knows? Maybe my word count will go up. Maybe it won't. Basically, I probably will not win because it is not my main focus right now. But I'm very happy that I wrote stuff. I haven't written stuff in a very long time. And maybe I'll make a habit of writing more, even if it's just like, you know, 200 words every couple days. That's still more than no words at all. So, yeah. I was also like, oh my gosh, I should draw my OCs from stories because I have tons of ideas for stories but I never draw these characters because they're not I'm not going to turn them into comics because I have too many comics already and sometimes they get turned into RP characters with bones sometimes they just sit and I'm like one day I'll write this book but I don't because I'm busy maybe I'll start writing these these books more and draw my characters more just for fun just to just as a challenge of like maybe let's see how I can design this character hmm yeah, definitely not going to win Nano, but I had fun. I had a good time. So yeah, Bones and I go to a lot of events in our local NaNoWriMo branch. Um, so it's always nice to like see those people and hang out with them and work on stuff with them. Because like, it's just nice to be around like other creative types. Because um, a lot of them, even though they are working on NaNoWriMo and they're writers, some of them are artists or like artisans. And it's just really nice to just talk to other artsy people. Um, especially because they're in our area and we can hang out with them outside of Nan NaNoWriMo as well. And it's fun meeting local artists because you get to high five in real life. <laughs> I'm really excited for Nine Point. Every time I like work on it, I'm like, ah, I want to get this ready and get this out. It's, it's just so exciting. I'm really happy. I really like Nine Point. I love this comic. I'm excited to make it a reality. And I'm just really happy with art today. I'm feeling the chill vibes. I'm like, hell yeah, I want to draw stuff. I want to make stuff. It's all fun. It's all good. So, like, I'm sure Bones has talked about this, and I know I've talked about this before, but, like, trying to do a legit NaNoWriMo has really cemented how much I don't like doing output-oriented art and how much that ruins art for me. And I used to, I used to do this all the time. So, output-oriented, like, working is when um, you say to yourself, like, okay, I'm going to make 20 comic pages this month, and if I don't make 20 comic pages this month, then I'm a failure. Or, like, I failed the challenge. Whatever it is. And if you don't hit it, you often feel like you failed, or, like, you should have worked harder, and every day that you're heading towards the deadline and you're not finishing pages, you feel really garbage, and it's just not good. Whereas, like, whenever I have a goal that's, like, I'm gonna work for 30 minutes every day, that's pretty doable. And if I miss a day and I don't work 30 minutes on a day, it's like, well, eh, it was only 30 minutes of work. I can catch up later. So, like, instead of focusing on, like, how many pages I can make, if I just focus on, like, how much time I spend on things, I feel a lot better. It's just, it's a lot more achievable to work on something for 30 minutes than it is to finish something. And yeah, trying to do NaNoWriMo where you have to write 50,000 words in a month, which is already crazy. I used to, when I was a teenager and I first started NaNoWriMo, and like I won the first few years, and I was like, this is easy, whatever. 50,000 in a month isn't that bad. But then like now, where I have way more commitments than I did in high school, it's like, this is impossible. This is so many words. It takes so much brain power to make... A, a book and make it make sense and like trying to do an output oriented goal again it was just so tiring and I was like oh my gosh I I am having fun doing the actual writing but like it is way too much all at once for me um whereas if it was a goal where it's like write 500 words every day I could maybe do that that's a lot more manageable for me I'm not a super like fast writer well, I guess, like, I am fast. I have a fast, like, words per minute if I really try. But, like, I like to sit and really think about, like, where the story's going when I'm writing. So, yeah, if I'm writing nonstop, it's, like, the scene goes nowhere. <laughs> so, but if I have to if I actually, like, sit and I think about, like, okay, where's the scene going? What do I want these characters to do? Like, the writing is a lot better than when I just zoom. And that goes for my art, too, because I love to, like, 
zoom through art and go as speedy as possible, but like when I slow down and I actually think about what I'm doing, it always turns out a lot better. Focusing on output really hurts me and my brain and my heart, but focusing on like time, that's way nicer. Makes me feel good inside and outside because my body doesn't hurt when I'm not making myself work for hours and hours and hours trying to hit an unachievable goal. So yeah, it just, it, it's very weird doing nano and realizing that it's just not for me. I'm still probably going to do NaNoWriMo in the future again, like camp NaNoWriMo and regular NaNoWriMo, just because like I love the atmosphere of it. I love being with like other creative people, like I said. Um, I like the idea of writing a novel in the month. It's a very like sparkly, shiny idea. Like I, I always want to do it. It makes me really excited about creating. So like that's what I want. Even if I don't hit the goal, I want the feeling of it all, I guess. Does that make sense? Am I being weird? Maybe. I don't know. It's just good vibes. As long as I don't, like, destroy myself doing it. It's really good vibes. Because, like, in the past, I've also done, like, comic pages during NaNoWriMo, where I'd try to do, like, I'd basically try to do, like, 25 pages in a month and just, like, count them in the NaNoWriMo counter. So, <laughs> and every page was, like, I don't know, 2,000 words or something. Which was really fun because I still got to hang out with all my NaNoWriMo friends and I still got to do creative work and get, hit my deadlines and stuff. So like, yeah, maybe I'll do that in the future instead of always writing. But this year it was really nice to just sit down and write again because I have not done it in many, many years. And I'm excited. I also had lots of my, my IRL friends, like, approach me about making book covers, and I'm really excited to do that as well. Because I really like doing graphic design. I do it for my day job. So I'm always like, oh, could I do, like, a vector-based thing? And they're like, oh, I wanted your illustration. And I'm like, oh, okay. I guess I could. Because I do, like, illustrating stuff in my style and doing illustrative stuff. But I also really, really like doing vector-based art. It's just, it's nice. Man, I really like it. It's really fun. It's one of the things I really love about my day job is that I get to do that all heckin' day. And I really like typography. I've gotten more into that since doing graphic design as my main job. It's also been really nice for YouTube thumbnails. I really like designing them. It's really fun. I get to choose cute fonts and really bright colors. I just like it. I'm into graphic design, guys. I'm into comics. I'm into writing. I'm in the creative good vibes mood. I hope you're here with me. Let's all be cool. I just want to do everything right now. So Bones has been talking about like he wants to get a little mini embroidery machine and I want to do lino block printing and make like t-shirts and apparel and stuff. So like one day we'll get there. We'll be little crafty guys. And also every once in a while I get this like urge to sculpt. I used to do sculpting in high school and like I miss it. It's just so fun. And sometimes I see people making like figurines or like figmas or whatever they are and, and making like little charms and stuff out of like, out of like clay, etc. Or like casting things. And I'm like, I want to do that. That looks so fun. Because I love sculpting. It's really cool. And it's a really good tool on like understanding how to draw things when you understand how to make them in 3D. I want to do it all, man. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to be creative. I want to have fun. I'm having a good time. I'm feeling really good. I think I came down off a lot of stress at work recently because my day job was stressing me out and NaNoWriMo was stressing me out. And I think just finally like letting go and being like, you don't have to finish this, Ursula, has really just chilled me out. And I'm, I mean, we're also going into the, the, the wintry holidays and I love them and they are nice and I get time off work, and that'll be great. <laughs> so this is where I'm at. I'm happy. I'm a happy, happy gray. I guess that's all. I guess those are my thoughts. Those are my dreams, my hopes. I better go. Also, like I mentioned earlier, Bones and I have a sale going on in our store. Um, it's for like Cyber Monday slash Black Friday. So go check out our Etsy store. All the information, like the the code and the store link and everything, it's all down there. But you can get 20% off um, and buy our books if you're interested. It is a good deal right now and it only goes till tomorrow. So get your orders in if you really want them. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I hope y'all get all your stuff done and are cute and chill. And yeah, good luck. Goodbye.